Welcome back. Lung cancer is by far the leading cause of cancer death among all Americans, and there are many misconceptions about lung cancer. But the truth is, if you have lungs, you can get lung cancer. Joining us now with advances in lung cancer detection and more is Professor of Radiology at UCLA Medical Center and Principal Investigator of the groundbreaking National Lung Screening Trial, Dr. Denise Aberly, and co-founder of LCFA, Lung Cancer and Prostate Cancer Patient, David Sturgis. Welcome to Great Day this morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. So how often would you recommend, doctor, that people get tested for lung cancer? Well, we know from the National Lung Screening Trial that annual screening exams using low radiation dose CT is the best way to identify an early lung cancer and can reduce deaths from lung cancer by 20% or more. So. We now recommend in the United States uh, adults that are between the ages of 55 and 77 who are current or former moderate to heavy smokers and who have quit smoking or have quit smoking within 15 years to be screened annually. Screening is really a process. It's not a one-time test. It's a process that we, that we do annually in order to make the diagnosis early. And tell us about the nasal swab technique to test for lung cancer. So the nasal swab is really one uh, of a number of tests or potential diagnostic tests that are currently in testing phases in clinical trials with humans. The nasal swab test actually involves using a swab or a small brush inside the nostril to gather cells from the inside of the nose. Those cells have a relationship to the cells within the lungs that are responsible for lung cancer. So the hope is that by using nasal cells, we're able to establish an early diagnosis of cancer without biopsy in patients who are asymptomatic. And there's also the liquid biopsy test. So liquid biopsy is a, is a relative of the nasal swab. Liquid biopsy refers to any kind of liquid, for example, blood, cell, um, blood or urine or exhaled breath condensate or even saliva. And we can use these easily obtained biospecimens and analyze them for molecules or for cells or for gene mutations, again, with the goal of making an early diagnosis of lung cancer in patients who lack symptoms. The best chance for cure of lung cancer is early detection and treatment. And we hear about CBD being used for all different kinds of treatment for all different types of patients. Is it useful in treatment for lung cancer patients specifically? Well, in a phrase we don't know. Uh, we know that CBD is being used for a variety of different reasons, both to treat the side effects of cancer treatment and also to treat some of the signs and symptoms of cancer itself. What we don't have is scientific evidence that would confirm that it is effective in those settings or whether it may actually harm or alter the course of treatment. So, if you have a cancer and are using CBD, it's important just to let your doctor know so that, in fact, if there were interactions between your treatment and the CBD, they could be identified. And David, you've been diagnosed with lung cancer twice and with prostate cancer as well, and you're also the co-founder of Lung Cancer Foundation of America. Tell us about your story. Well, thank you and good morning. Uh, I was diagnosed with lung cancer about 18 years ago. It was a chance diagnosis, as most lung cancer diagnoses are. Uh, I had been what I thought was a pretty fit guy, uh, having climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, and not long before my diagnosis, having uh, run the San Diego uh, Marathon. Uh, after that, unfortunately, I had a, a heart scan the heart scan, which I thought was routine, turned out to be anything but routine. And the results indicated that the heart was fine, but unfortunately a footnote indicated that there was a spot on one of the lobes of my lung. 
and that spot turned out to be malignant and I had surgery and one of the lobes of my lung was removed. Uh, I have done well since that diagnosis and that surgery been followed carefully uh, by a great medical team ever since then and about two years ago though I was diagnosed with another sp uh, lung cancer again after another spot was found on one of my, my lobes. Uh, I think that uh, what is important about my story uh, is the idea of early detection, early diagnosis as Dr. Aberly has been talking to you about now. Uh, I think that that in many respects is the key to my survival. I think I would also just add parenthetically as well that at the time of my first diagnosis surgery was my only option. The things that have come to the fore now in terms of immunotherapy and targeted therapies was not known at that time and not available uh, as a treatment option. All right, thank you both for your time today. So to learn more, you can head to lungcancerfacts.org. And of course, there's much more to come on Great Day after the break. We'll be back.